0705 Thursday the 7th of May 2020. Good afternoon and welcome to the 2 p.m. News on 88.4 Royal FM and live on Facebook on Royal FM Cameroon with me, Promise Akante, our top stories. Despite measures taken by the government to ease the economic consequences of COVID-19 on businesses by the suppression of certain taxes and market charges, some unscrupulous individuals still go around extorting money from retailers in some markets in Yaoundé. In this newscast, we will spotlight on the Funzi market. Barrister Congo Felix Agbombala has been suspended from the University of Boya over an examination question he set for students on the anglophone crisis. In this newscast, we hear from a university lecturer on how apolitical the university should be. And in sports, reactions continue over the suspension or not of the elite championship in Cameroon. In this newscast, we will hear from all the actors concerned. Stay with us. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. My name is Promise Akanti. Today, May 7, is World AIDS Orphans Day, a grassroots campaign designed to create awareness and promote advocacy for the more than 15 million children worldwide orphaned by AIDS. The day was founded in 2002. An AIDS orphan is a child who became an orphan because one or both parents died from AIDS before reaching the age of 15. We stay in health to talk about the coronavirus to say figures from the Ministry of Public Health show that as of yesterday, May 6, Cameroon has 2,265 confirmed cases of coronavirus out of 10,268 tests performed. 934 people have recovered so far with 108 deaths from one, some 109 health personnel are also reportedly infected with the coronavirus. Meantime, Amnesty International has, in a statement, called on the Cameroonian government to come clean on the situation of COVID-19 in Cameroonian prisons and provide detainees with adequate medical care and stop exasperating overcrowded with arbitrary arrests. The right group, while commending the government's efforts to free prisons, says it is grossly insufficient. The United Kingdom has offered financial and material support to the Cameroon government to help in the fight against the coronavirus in the country. The British High Commissioner to Cameroon, His Excellency Rohan James Laxon, met yesterday evening with the Prime Minister Joseph Dion Gute. His Excellency Rohan James Laxon, in the following except says, they both discussed diverse issues. We supported Cameroon's bid on Monday IMF for access to the rapid credit facility, $266 million. Uh, in Cameroon, what does that mean? It means uh, support for health facilities, primarily through UNICEF. But I was delighted to inform the Prime Minister that we have made a small contribution to the Pasteur Institute, which will enable Minsanti's efforts to decentralize testing. We talked a little bit about the security situation in the country, about the need for relief, recovery, and reconstruction in the Northwest and Southwest, about the economy, and in particular, British current and prospective future British investments to, uh, to develop the economy in, in Cameroon and tr mutual trade and investment. I also talked about plans to repatriate a number of British nationals who've been stranded, found themselves stranded here. Uh, the Prime Minister has been very helpful, as have others across the administration. So we're planning to do something in the near future. And still in line with the coronavirus, the government of Cameroon had taken some measures to ease the economic consequences of the COVID-19 on businesses by the suppression of certain taxes and market charges. However, some retailers in the nation's capital are being forced to keep on paying taxes in a bid to undertake their activities in some markets, disregarding this recent measure taken by the government. Our reporter, Germenta, went finding out 
From this by Amselams, what happens as they denounce. Every Saturday we used to pay 1,000 francs. Then every Saturday we used to pay 200 francs for, for sweeping the market. We used to pay 100 francs every day for ticket. But now they say that we should not pay ticket, but we have to pay those 1,000 every Saturday. We are still paying the 1,000. We know them not. They, they are working inside the council. A sad situation indeed that Jane, unlike Pa Acho, are facing at the Funzi market. The women say that we should not pay. If we cannot pay, the people that they are working in post, they will come and say that we must pay. They are worried we in the market. So I must pay because if I did not pay, they will come and tell me that I should take my things away. In the market here, we used to pay ticket. We used to pay an uh, impose. Impose is one five. We used to pay five five hundred to add the plus. That's how we used to do and to find out if they have submitted the problem to the market authorities to seek for help, this is what they had to say. I cannot go me there because I'm an anglophone person. Where you go there, they do not look at you. I cannot go me there. So they call you, where, where you go there, where you speak English, you don't look at you as, as if you are. So me, I cannot go me there. But here, when I look around, I cannot see my own person that I can give my own report to her. If you have your problem, you know person that you will also go and they have just select just people that they are here. They just put them. That's why they are worried we in the market. While working across the Funzi market to find out from those in charge of collecting these taxes why they keep on collecting money even though the government uplifted this exercise, none of them wanted to answer to our question. And to round up, these retailers call on the government to... That is to send somebody to come and constrict, to come and look whether they are taking the money or they are not taking the money. That report there by Germain Ta. The Minister of Finance, Louis Paul Motaze, has stated that the fact or stated the fact that the 135 billion franc CFA, according to Cameroon by the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, is a loan which the country has to repay. Let's now listen to Minister Motaze as he granted an interview to the national media. It's very good news for the country. You know that we are facing the crisis, you all know, and there is a plan that has been uh, carried out by the government and uh, we need money for that. And this is why we got in touch with the IMF and we had a lot of discussions. Uh, we are very happy to know that the negotiations have led to a positive conclusion. Before COVID-19, we are facing an economic crisis. That means that even if there is this pandemic, the problems we were facing still remain. And that means that we need money because we have some supply we have to, to make and we are losing a lot of money with the crisis. And that means that we are going to face a lot of difficulties in the future. And this is why it's very important for us to see how we can look for funding for all the projects we have because life should continue. When we were negotiating with the IMF, the goal was the health sector for COVID-19. That means that I will write to the uh, Minister of Health. It's up to him to let us know what are his needs. We will negotiate with him. But I will not say that this is what we are going to do. All what I will say, because I am what we call the governor of the IMF, that means that every six months, the IMF will ask me to make a report. I will just try to see with the Minister of uh, Health what are the projects he has as far as this problem is concerned. I want to let you know that these are negotiations and, uh, and people forget that it's not money given like that, it's loan. That was Minister Louis Paul Motaze speaking there. And still talking about the loan Cameroon has received from the International Monetary Fund, a reporter Abel Bela Samarin, the following commentary says it should not only be used for the health sector. The other day, the World Health Organization, in its effort to support the government against the coronavirus, gave out 14 vehicles to the Central Regional Health Services and Health Authority in the region, said the vehicles will be used exclusively for the region to fight against the coronavirus. But when we look at the number of divisions that made up the Central Region, you will realize that there are 10 divisions to share 14 vehicles. Logically, four vehicles will be hanging in the air. President Paul Bia, while relaxing measures towards COVID-19, 
2019 said money will be pumped in into the economy through tax reduction and increase in family allowance. The Hawanangsa question remains how many families working under the private sector in Cameroon actually will benefit from this social insurance scheme. We have a private sector that is limping with no proper follow-up since most of the employers are political entrepreneurs who would prefer to pump in large amounts of money into party politic business rather than pumping the same amount of money in the life of their workers. From this hypothesis, you will see that the laudable initiative of the head of state will not be failed by the common man. The devastating effect of the coronavirus is being felt by all Cameroonians, injecting 135 billion francs CFA to the health sector. Meanwhile, the research sector and the educational sector, particularly private sector, is overstatement. Teachers of the private sector, ever since schools were abruptly stopped, they have not seen a penny as salary. Respectable teachers have all become beggars from their students or parents of the same children they are expected to mentor. Where then is the moral lesson of hard work pay? Researchers on their part are not able to carry out effective research in Cameroon just because of lack of funding. Many Cameroonians are of the opinion that the 135 billion francs CFA issued by the International Monetary Fund would have been shared to all the sectors affected by this crisis. But that is not the case. Perhaps the government, in its finest thinking, is thinking of a package for this vulnerable group of people who are becoming beggars just because of the coronavirus. All the same, investing 135 billion francs CFA to the health sector is a good initiative, but the common man in the street wants to feel the impact. It should not be like the two billion francs CFA gift of soap, buckets, and face masks from the head of state that has not yet reached most of the common people in the capital city of Yaoundé. <laughs> You are listening to the news on 88.4 Royal FM and live on Facebook on Royal FM. Cameron Ort, one of our top stories, Barista Congo Felix Agbombala has been suspended from the University of Boya as an instructor. This following his refusal to appear before a disciplinary council of the University of Boya for questioning in connection with an examination question he crafted for law students on the anglophone crisis our reporter agrees limunga mukake quiz a lecturer to know if the university can be a political she now reports why not begin by stating the fact that barista bala has reacted by saying that he refused appearing before the disciplinary council because the summons from the institution that is the university of boya disregards relevant instruments and violates his rights as a lecturer in the university alem king alem king richard is a university lecturer who says the Minister of Higher Education should not have intervened in the matter. I think uh, the Agwabala issue with the University of Boya has overstretched its bounds. Uh, normally, an issue of question setting should not go up to the level of uh, the minister intervening. As the principal goes at the level of the university, um, it is the head of department who is responsible for vetting questions that are given to students at the end of each semester. The problem stems from the fact that Agbo Bala crafted a law exam question on the Anglophone crisis. Is the university milieu apolitical? Alemkeng Richard refuses categorically. The problems of uh, Gobala with the University of Boya claiming that uh, he gave some questions which seems political uh, is wholly unfounded. Politics is taught at the level of the universities. It is even used in the campus as illustration. But politics is not practiced in the university campus. They don't practice politics in the university campus. But it's used as uh, examples to illustrate the theory that is being taught. The lecturer goes ahead to decry the fact that the vice chancellor nor the registrar do not have to get into the matter, and that sanctioning Barista Bala today indicates that there is more to the situation than meets the eye. Normally, if the vice chancellor of Mr. Abue says that the campus is a political and Mr. Abubala seems to have given political question to the students, it's very, very normal that the question can be political. It is not the place of the vice chancellor or the university registrar to intervene in such issues. It is a simple matter of the head of the department of political science. Did the head of the department approve the questions? Yes or no? If the head of the department approved the questions, then it should be answerable to them, not them facing Agwabala. If they move straight to face Agwabala, it means that they have particular problems with Agwabala. It has come to show us how porous and how politicized our universities are. Even though he says lecturers can have their exam questions screened, he upholds that this issue surrounding Barista Bala has been politicized. Yes, it is quite true. Uh, lecturers can be controlled the kind of question that you said. Each course has its uh, protocol. The head of the department and the lecturers of the other department, they agree on the protocol. 
on how the questions are going to be said. However, what I can say, Rosmodo, on this issue of Agobala is, is, is just that the matter has been politicized, and since Agobala is a political figure, some people want to use it to set this course. Well, I, don't, I don't find any reason why the questions were sent to the Minister of Higher Education, and then he was given an induction to appear at the Dismary Council. He goes ahead to mention the fact that the head of department was the sole person to react and it was supposed to be in a discreet manner. Normally, in a gentlemanly manner, if a lecturer fails to measure up in the department, I think what the HOD does is that at the end of the semester, he is not programmed and he goes away silently and gently instead of exposing the whole system uh, to come the, the way it has been done today. We will register, went on to, to commit plenty of fallacies of our argumentum homening. Not being an employee of the Ministry of Higher Education, Alemkeng reports that he sees no reason why convocate him to the disciplinary council. From what the university is saying, Agobala is not a former employee of the Ministry of Higher Education, and consequently, I don't think he has any contract with them. If he has no contract with them, then there was no need to carry him to the disciplinary council. They even claim that at one moment that he was maintained in the last two years using gentlemanly agreement. A contract can be written, can be verbal, can be moral, and it can also be ended up in any of those ways. Alem Keng Richard Enida reported by Grace Limunga Mukake. We've seen education to say that education stakeholders in the northwest region of Cameroon have met in a meeting to prepare for school resumption. The Northwest Regional Delegate for Secondary Education, Guang Roland, at the end of the meeting sent out this clarion call. All the students to spend this moment getting ready in terms of having themselves properly informed about COVID-19, having the right gadgets. I'll give an example, the face masks. The parents should make sure that they buy face masks for their children. Every parent should have at least five face masks so that students are not tempted to use the same face mask over and over. The Northwest Regional Governor Adolf Lili Lafrik calls or says all hands have to be put on deck for schools to resume properly in the northwest region of Cameroon. Take into account that we have already passed more than three years with some of our children not going to school. If we are obliged to pass this year again, it will be a catastrophe. It is a deep concern for all the sons and daughters of this region to make sure class resume in this region. Governor Adolf Lilila Free speaking then. Away from education, the Minister of External Relations, Lejeune Belambela, has summoned the German Charge d'Affaires to Cameroon and his counterparts of the Central African Republic following a wave of attacks by Cameroonians in the country's embassies in Berlin. This also follows comments made by the Central African Health Minister against Cameroon. And we continue and end our series on World Press Freedom Day in Cameroon, where Ebel Bela Samari spoke with Mr. Alemkin, Richard, a journalism lecturer, who today talks how the no free press um, talks on the no press pre in the world. We must understand that there is no absolute press freedom anywhere in the world. Cameroon, which professes to have one of the freest press in Francophone Africa, has a lot of limitation to press freedom. When by the, by, by the few improvements the government has made since 19, 1990, you can say that there are several limits to press freedom in Cameroon. To further explain, Mr. Alemken Richard states that Cameroon is having a relatively free press blocked by the laws put in place. This um, uh, limitation to press freedom in Cameroon comes from one, the constitution, two, the legislature, three, the courts, for the government. So when you look at our media, media landscape, you find that all the problems faced by our media men, they, they arise from the constitution, they arise from the legislature, they arise from the courts, and from the government. And these four elements serve as heavy obstacles to press freedom. <laughs> Out of the country, a woman has given birth on board a flight repatriating Nigerians from Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, the AE, UAE. The chairperson of the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Abike Dabiri Erewa, the lady Kafayat Amusan, had given birth to a baby boy about 30 minutes after the flight left the airport. The plane returned to Dubai immediately to ensure the safety of both mother and baby. 
Ms. Amusan and her baby are scheduled to return to Nigeria after the newborn's birth certificate is issued and other necessary documents are prepared. The woman was among the first batch of Nigerians evacuated from the UAE because of the coronavirus pandemic. Some 256 people later arrived at Mutala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos at about 7 p.m. Wednesday. Flooding as a result of recent heavy rains has killed more than 260 people across East Africa. Kenya has been the hardest hit, with the government recording 194 deaths. In Rwanda, 55 people have died and floods have killed 16 in Somalia. In Uganda, high water levels have trapped an estimated 200 patients inside a hospital. East African countries have also been hit by a low-cost invasion and COVID-19. The water has washed away 8,000 acres of crops and some vital infrastructure, while meteorologists predict that the heavier-than-usual rains will continue throughout the month of May. The rainy season normally lasts to June. A virtual meeting held by South African Parliamentary Committee has been hacked and the speaker abused. The programming committee's session had just started this Thursday morning when pornographic images appeared on the screen and a male voice hurled insults at speaker Thandi Modize, who was chairing it. The outraged speaker exclaimed that this was why she opposed virtual meetings. MPs described the incident as sick and disturbing. Parliament's technicians created a new link where MPs joined in. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson will deliver a public statement on Sunday at 7 p.m. on the route out of lockdown. The statement is expected to give the UK a sense of what happens next, with some changes expected to come in on Monday in England. Ministers will decide what they want to do at a cabinet meeting today. In the U.S., President Donald Trump is moving ahead with plans to reopen the U.S. and get the economy going again despite concerns that the number of infections is not yet under control. The U.S. currently has 1.2 million confirmed coronavirus infections and more than 73,000 related deaths, according to John Hopkins University. And then German Chancellor Angela Merkel has said Germany's goal of showing the spread of slowing the spread of coronavirus has been achieved so all shops can be reopened as lockdown restrictions are eased. Bundesliga football has been given a green light to resume and schools will gradually reopen in the summer term. Germany's 16 federal states under an agreement with the government will take control of the timing of timing the reopening. Let's come back to talk sports. <laughs> Any sports football, the president of the Cameroon Football Federation, Fika Futse Dumbomunjoya, has told reporters that their heart is willing to go back to the pitch for football, but health threats is the primary worry. Speaking on Tuesday after the distribution exercise of kits donated by the Samuel Oteo Foundation for the fight against the coronavirus pandemic, President Bombonjoya stressed on the importance of playing safe in these trying times. I am serene because whatever the case, nobody could imagine that we could have this kind of pandemic. Nobody knew that would be this pandemic and now it's a big mess in the football calendar. It's not a priority for us because public health is the most important thing. Football is nothing in front of public health. That's why we are getting close to our pool to give them means to, to fight against the corona. So we are all waiting what is going to happen. Technically, it sounds difficult, but I don't know what's going to happen. A decision will be taken very soon. But when uh, well, very soon, so what's going to happen? We will just organize ourselves and according to that. For the moment, it's too early to talk about that. When is the end of the pandemic? When are we going out of the confinement? Are we able to organize matches with the public or not? Are we able to organize technically, safely matching between players? Are we not putting our players in danger? Oh, there's so many questions, so all this has to be clarified in the next couple of weeks and months. Then we'll have a situation more clear, and then we can know what to do. Seydou Mbombo Njoya speaking there to Martin Kabru, coach of USA. The focus now should be how to fight against the coronavirus. 
the lives of these actors is priceless and exposing them to the dangers of this COVID-19 monster is not worth whatever silver where anyone stands the chance of picking up. So if the only alternative is to declare the current leader of the championship champions, then everybody will have to accept the decision. If PWD is in that position, it then is that they deserve to be there, that wealth had to be there, that the best as of now, that the team that was the most constant and the most consistent as the result on the field of play. They have been a regular occupant of the first places this season and I think it may just be a logical conclusion. It's a bit frustrating for the other actors but that's just one of the collaterals of COVID-19. What can we do? If that's the decision that's going to come out, then I will just ask all the teams to fall behind PWG so we support the team. And so we encourage the players, the management and everybody that's around that team so they can prepare the African competition very well and try to go as far as possible. I think uh, that's the only thing we can do. Let's now welcome Carol Prudence Tien to the summary of this newscast in the French language. Bon après-midi, Carol. Good afternoon, promise à compter lutte contre le Covid-19 au Cameroun, malgré l'arrêté du Premier ministre concernant l'exonération des taxes pour une durée de trois mois. Les commerçants du marché du Fondi à Yaoundé disent débourser la somme de 500 à 1000 francs CFA pour pouvoir écouler leurs marchandises le samedi. Affaire Félix Agbor Bala, après la demande de d'explications servies à l'intéresser sur ordonnance du ministre de l'enseignement supérieur et son refus de se présenter pour explication. Il a finalement été suspendu pour avoir donné un sujet de dissertation sur une question dite sensible à savoir la crise anglophone à ses étudiants. La ville de Kribi a désormais son port autonome. Deux décrets présidentiels signés il y a moins de 72 heures fixent les modalités de fonctionnement de l'infrastructure Selon les tests présidentiels, le port de Limbé bénéficie des facilités identiques à celles accordées au port de Kribi et Douala. Aussi, l'espace portuaire sera doté des droits, des obligations et d'une autonomie financière devant faciliter son exploitation. En Afrique du Sud, ce jeudi, la visioconférence des députés a été piratée et remplacée par des images pornographiques et des voix non identifiées tenir des propos insultants à l'endroit du président. Président de l'Assemblée nationale, la dite réunion a pu se poursuivre sur d'autres plateformes. Et en sport, les propositions de la Fédération camerounaise de football à la CAF concernant l'arrêt ou non de ces championnats sont la possibilité de renouer avec les activités sportives en juin prochain ou arrêter tout simplement les dix championnats en attendant que le Covid-19 soit vaincu. And that's the package we put together for you this Thursday afternoon. The news was produced by the entire news desk of Royal FM 88.4 Techniques in Rumiad Ekume, Alan Quickham, and the cameras for the live broadcast on Facebook. Carol Prudence, Etienne was our copyright clerk. Bertrand Abona for editorial coaching. Roger Kiyek for coordination. Reverend Pastor Emmanuel Noel Bisai for general supervision. Our Balungo newscast comes up at 6 p.m. co presented by Germain and Jean-Jacques Foucault. Up next, after me, is on refait l'actu avec vous with le Duc, Roger Kiyek de Kiki. My name is Promise Akante, inviting you all to please stay home as much as possible, go out only if necessary, wear a face mask, wash your hands as regular as possible and use the sanitizers and please do have a royal time on Royal FM. Mm-hmm.